Okay, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, social statistics session. Um, our first speaker today is Alberto Como, and he's going to be talking about Bayesian social network analysis with Bergen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. My name is Alberto Caimo, and I'm a lecturer in statistics at the Dublin Institute of Technology. And today I'm going to talk about um, the Bergen package, which is implementing Bayesian exponential random graph model um, for social network analysis. This is a package that I created, and I am still the maintainer of this uh, package. Um, so first of all, we will um, just uh, introduce some definitions and notations. Um, so social networks are generally represented by uh, graphs of nodes that may represent a variety of different actors, such as people, companies, industries, whatever you want, and edges that are relations um, between these nodes. Um, in social network analysis, in most models, we assume that the number of nodes, at capital N, is fixed. And we basically regard um, the structure of the graph, the relational structure of the graph, as a um, random realization. Uh, so capital Y is going to be our random adjacency matrix, encoding the presence or absence of an edge between uh, the, the, the nodes of the graph. So it's going to be Y is going to be a random N times N adjacency matrix, where each entry is uh, YIJ is going to be either 1 if the node I is connected to node J, and it's going to be 0 if node I is not connected to node J. Generally, self loops are not allowed, so entries on the diagonal are equal to 0. So YII is generally equal to 0. We will use the notation that a small y is a realization of capital Y. So here you have an, um, a picture of a simple, very simple graph of six, on six nodes, and here you have the um, associated adjacency matrix. So we will not be uh, focusing on the properties of the nodes. We will just model the relational structure of the, of the network graphs. So the basic assumptions behind um, exponential random graph models is that the observed network structure, Y, is generated by a stochastic process, process in which edges are created because of the presence or absence of other edges. edges sorry. Local effects are represented by network statistics that we include in the model uh, that generate dyadic re relations and might depend on the surrounding environment. So the presence, as we said, the, the presence of edges is not just a dyadic property, but is going to be influenced by the presence or absence of other edges, um, especially the ones involving the nodes in uh, under study. Um, for example, similar attributes are generally more likely, so, uh, sorry, uh, nodes with similar attributes are generally more likely to form friendship edges. So this is regarded as homophily. Two nodes connected to a third node are likely to form an edge between them. So this is basically a triangular clustering. Um, exponential random graph models are defined as the probability of observing a network graph um, as a function, is an exponential function of theta times uh, a vector of sufficient statistics, S of y, uh, divided by C of theta, which is a normalizing constant. So basically these models, which uh, represent the most popular uh, family of network models, are um, describing the probability of observing a certain network structure and a certain adjacency matrix as a function of the parameters theta. Theta is the vector of parameters associated to the network statistics that we have included in the model. Examples of network statistics are number of edges, number of triangles, number of any kind of network statistics we want to include in our model. Uh, the issue related, from a computational point of view, the issue is that exponential random graph models are not tractable in the sense that the normalizing constant cannot be analytically uh, uh, computed. And uh, basically, the normalizing constant can be not compute, cannot be computed uh, for non-trivially small networks. 
Um, in terms of Bayesian inference, uh, from a computational point of view, is even the situation is even worse because um, the posterior distribution is doubly intractable since both the norm likelihood normalizing constant C of theta and the marginal likelihood P of Y is not available, are not available. Uh, in this uh, uh, equation, you also see uh, the base theorem. So the posterior, we are interested in inferring the posterior, um, the probability of theta given the data as a function of the likelihood and um, of the nor uh, prior distribution P of theta divided by the nor marginal likelihood. So BERGM is an R package which provides a comprehensive framework for Bayesian estimation and model adequacy uh, for exponential learning graph models using advanced Monte Carlo algorithms. Uh, BERGM is based on the StatNet, package, um, Statnet packages, so in some sense is complementing the ERGM packages included in StatNet. ERGM is implementing frequentist uh, anal um, analysis of uh, ERGM, BERGM is implementing Bayesian uh, exponential random graph models. Um, the main function of the BERGM package are these three. Uh, so BERGM is actually the main function which is implementing fitting Bayesian exponential random graph models using approximate exchange algorithm. Um, then, of course, we have BERGM uh, output, which is a function which returns some um, summaries of the posterior parameter density estimate. And then we have um, the function BGOF, which is implementing uh, Bayesian goodness of fit diagnostics. Um, let's see an example here. I just uh, um, loaded um, the, the StatNet package, which is containing this uh, uh, very, very well-known data set, uh, Zachary Karate Club. Uh, it's a network on 34 uh, nodes. Um, representing members of this karate club interacting uh, between them. Um, so it's a very small graph. Um, here you can see the, 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 the picture of the, of the graph. So suppose we are interested in this simple um, ERGM specification. So we would like to um, basically model this overall structure by including some local Network, local effects expressed by, uh, described by uh, network statistics. In particular, we will choose these three statistics, uh, number of edges representing uh, the density of the, of the, of the network, uh, geometrically weighted degree, so this statistic here called the GW degree means ge geometrically weighted degree, so it's a geometrically weighted function of the degree distribution of the network. And then we also include the geometrically weighted edgewise share pattern statistics. So basically the first statistic is, is somehow capturing the tendency toward, towards density. The second one is somehow capturing the, the preferential attachment um, or uh, popularity in the network. Um, this, the third one is capturing the transitivity, or better in this case, which is a, an undirected network, we are actually aiming at describing the clustering effect uh, through the uh, calculation of triangles. Uh, using, uh, you can see here from the code is, is, is a, a completely identical to the RGM package for those who are familiar with this package. We just fixed the, here, the um, geometrical weight, uh, uh, tuning parameter, decay parameter, to be 0 0.2. So it's very simple. It's uh, um, completely analogous to the uh, model formulation that we have in StatNet. The good thing about Bayesian, uh, the Bayesian approach is that we can include prior information uh, uh, regarding our uh, model. In particular, this is a very trivial example, but um, we generally have the possibility of uh, using normal prior distribution. In this case, I chose uh, vague prior distribution, so I um, set the variances equal to five. Um, the density of the network is uh, generally low. Uh, in this case, uh, for sure, it's gonna be less than 0 0.5. So I expect theta one, uh, so the parameter associated to the density parameter, which, uh, which is the number of edges, to be negative. 
by using prior uh, information, we can actually include here a normal distribution centered at minus two with a variance equal to five. For those who may want to include a more uh, informative prior, may, uh, you may, uh, for example, um, decrease the value of the variance and uh, concentrate most of the probability mass on the negative um, space, parameter space. Uh, here, I haven't included a correlation between the parameters, but of course, um, what generally in real world networks is expected is that the density and the clustering are uh, negatively correlated. Um, also, generally, theta 3, which is associated to the um, clustering effect, is generally positive. So, another possible prior specification might be to include the mean here which is zero actually uh, to, uh, can be set to a positive value. This is the structure of the approximate exchange algorithm. Um, so here I just replaced uh, the, I just, uh, uh, this is very uh, simple um, uh, algorithm uh, in order to understand also the, alg uh, the arguments inside the function, the Bergen function. So there are n chains interacting with each other. Uh, main eaters times n chains is giving you the, basically the overall number of iterations in the MCMC algorithm. The parameter proposal distribu um, distribution is a function of this parameter gamma. And also we have to tune the number of auxiliary iterations used at the step two to simulate networks at each step of the of, uh, main MCMC algorithm. So in some sense, the approximate exchange algorithm behind this function is an MCMC within MCMC algorithm. This algorithm allows us to sample from a distribution, a doubly intractable distribution. Uh, here is an example. Um, so Bergm uh, model, we have just specified 1,500 uh, um, iterate, main iterations six number of chains, so twice the model dimensionality. So overall, we're gonna have 9,000 um, iterations. The only parameter that, uh, of course, uh, auxiliary iterations has to be proportional to the number of diets. So 3,000 should be um, large enough. The parameter that we have to tune is this gamma, 0 0.9. This has to be tuned in order to get more or less 20, 21% acceptance rates for those of you who know MCMC, this is the optimal acceptance rate. Uh, so the higher is the value of gamma, the lower is gonna be the acceptance rate and vice versa. Um, and then we have the, our prior uh, specification here. So these are the results that you get from this very simple model. Uh, we have a very rich uh, picture of the uncertainty because we don't know, we, we have the mean, the standard deviation. Uh, we have also all the quantiles and percentiles based on the uh, posterior distribution. And, and as you can see, the acceptance rate that I reached setting gamma equal to 9.9, .9, uh, sorry, 0 0.9 is around 20%. Here we have also produced by the Bergman dot output uh, function, the um, graphical diagnostics, so the traces, uh, the curves of the uh, posterior uh, density and the uh, autocorrelation plots. Um, then, after we have performed this analysis, we can uh, check the goodness of fit diagnostics. Uh, this is very similar to the RGM package, except for the fact that we actually sample, um, we draw a sample from our posterior distribution, so we collect, uh, let's say, a hundred uh, parameters from our procedure distribution and from each of these parameters we, we simulate networks and then we compare the simulated networks uh, to the original network in order to see if there is a good match between the distribution, network statistics distribution of the simulated networks against the, the, observed, the, the ones uh, of the uh, observed network. And here you see the uh, results. So I actually uh, took a sample of 100 uh, parameter points from the posterior. I simulated, uh, I used the same number of sim um, iterations to simulate networks. So for each of these 100 parameters, I simulated one network using 3,000 simulation. 
simulations, and then these are just graphical um, arguments. So n dag, n dist, and n asp is just the number of uh, degree uh, minimum geodesic distance and edge wise share part and statistics that I want to uh, plot in our uh, in my in my in my plots. As you can see here, for this very simple example, there is a good match if the red line represented the distribution of the original network is going to fall inside the 95% uh, interval um, generated by the uh, simulated networks. Um, so to conclude, Bergman is, uh, has been extensively used in various applications recently and it's uh, under continual development. Future developments will include um, improved scalability. There is a calibrate Bergm function inside the package which allows us to correct the pseudo likelihood uh, estimation in order um, making everything much, much faster. Uh, we will include also functions to handle uh, missing data and model selection procedure for marginal likelihood based factor estimation. If you, know, if you want to know more about um, exponential random graph models with R, um, you can find this uh, manual that I'm keeping, uh, which is again under continual development, where uh, I uh, both uh, uh, go through frequentist and Bayesian inference for exponential random graph models. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple of minutes for questions, if there are any for Alberto. Yes? Is it possible to specify user statistics as in the ERGM mode? The yeah. Package? yeah, you can, uh, I actually did that. Um, there is also on my GitHub page, there are some other statistics that I include. You can use the ERGM term uh, package to, to create new statistics. And once you update the statistics in the RGM package, Bergman will, will be automatically uh, able to deal with those. Yeah. So it's, uh, we're using ERGM for all the simulation and network statistics calculations. Any others? Yeah. Current, currently, how many nodes can you, can you easily How many add nodes? nodes? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, we, we're still working on the calibrate Bergen function, which is uh, potentially able to uh, deal with a few thousand of nodes, uh, let's say 5,000 uh, in, uh, let's say, less than an hour. Uh, it, it, of course, it depends on the, on the size also of the, of the, of the model, because, uh, for example, in this case, in order to improve mixing, we have to set also the number of chains, which is generally twice the model dimensionality. So uh, if you have a 20 uh, dimensional model, you will have to set 40, let's say 40, or maybe less, but a high number of chains. But we are working on this, and uh, we will be able to estimate uh, networks on a few thousand of nodes. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, thank Alberto and uh, move on to our next speaker. So set up.